and welcome to the Knit Sips podcast, a podcast by three yarn obsessed sisters. Um, I'm Julia. I'm Valerie. And I'm Gloria. Welcome to the show. Today is November 13th. It's Sunday. Um, and I think we should start off with announcing a new giveaway. Um, we haven't done one in a while. Um, I was planning on going to the New England New England Fiber Festival last weekend, and I was going to buy a few things to give away, but um, we had a bit of a family emergency and I wasn't able to go. So I have some yarn from my stash that we're going to give away. That's all local dyers. I don't think two of them are dying anymore, but one of them still is. So the first one we have is Hardware City Yarn Co., who I, ca I can't find anything about her. Like her website isn't up anymore or anything. So I don't think she's dying. Um, but the color is called Autumn. That's very pretty. I was going to say, those are very fall colors. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and so this is a superwash fingering, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon um, fingering weight. So that's the first one. The second one is by someone who's definitely still dying because I see her all over the place around here. Sassy Black Yarns. This is called Lemon Kiwi. I'm not sure, but I think this is going to more like micro stripe. I don't think it's self-striping. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it looks kind of like holiday yarn where it goes like one row per stripe. Yeah, I'm not even sure if it would do a full row. I'm not sure. I, I haven't unscanned it to see what it looks like, but I, I'm almost positive it is not a self-striping. Um, so this is the second one. And this is, so Sassy Black Yarns is local to me and she now like opened up her own studio. Um, oh. So you can go in and in person and shop now. Um, and the last one is not dying anymore. This is Beach Bum, Beach Bum Yarn. And this is called Moon Child. This is like a silvery blue or purpley blue on one side and then black on the other. And it's got Lorex, it's called. So it's not like a Stellina type thing. It's 90% um, Merino, 10% Lorex. Hmm. It's super shiny. Very pretty. So it's all fingering weight. So all we're going to ask for you to do is um, leave a comment below and we'll pick from that. And I think what I'll do is the first person we pick, I'll give them the choice of which yarn they want. And then the second person will have the choice of the two leftover yarn. And the third person will just get the last, last yarn that's left. Comment on Instagram or on um, YouTube? On YouTube. Let's get some YouTube comments. So comment on YouTube. Um, well, you should put something on Instagram too, that we're having a giveaway, but they have to go to YouTube and comment on YouTube. Yeah, yeah we'll do that. All right. I'm trying to adjust my light. I'm sorry. I'm like... I know we're like almost it's the end of daytime and we haven't recorded during daytime in a very long time. Yeah. I'm like part ghost, part shadow. I don't know. Yeah. How to it's okay. It. You're fine. Oh, that's better. That's better. Okay. More natural looking. All right. Yeah. Um, so I think today we have on our needles, off our needles. I have an outlier craft. Um, and I think that's it. So I have an outlier craft too. Well, I sort of have an outlier craft. Um, so let's start with what's off our needles. Anyone have anything? Because I do. I'll go first. Because okay. I think yours is more exciting than mine. Okay. So I actually have two things off my needles. So I didn't tell you guys about this because I wanted to surprise you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with my finished objects. I haven't sent pictures of them. The first one is my first um, holiday gift giving. Um, these nice. are the socks I was making for my mother-in-law. Um, so these are the shallow socks by Kay Litton, who is the crazy sock lady. And you can see there's like some texture to the sock there. Um, I did contrast cuff, heel and toe. Um, ends are woven in on one sock so far, not <laughs> both of them. Um, I have to say, I enjoy the look of this contrast heel cuff toe. I do not enjoy weaving in ends on socks. I do not enjoy weaving in ends on socks at all. It's not really. that many ends though. Um, it's I not think like a scrappy it, sock. Yeah, I would ne ne ends. never do a scrappy sock. <laughs> if, you do, if you do cuff, heel, toe contrast, it's 10 ends for mm -hmm. a sock. That's a right. lot. We're normally two. Yeah. Um, 
but I think part of it is this, the contrast color is so dark. Mm -hmm. Like I can't see what I'm doing when I'm trying to weave these ends in and that is really frustrating. Um, so the yarn is, um, it was a stock blank by Loft 22. Um, it was a, it was just color eight. Um, I guess it just goes by numbers. Um, and then the contrast is just some leftover um, Miss Babs that I had, um, but the contrast is 100% merino. It's not merino nylon. So it's thicker also than the rest of the sock. And I think all those things together are making the weaving in the ends very unenjoyable. Um, yeah. But they are done. This color is, I love this sock blank color, the main color. Um, and I have, I weighed it, I have a little over 50 grams left. So I should be able to make myself a pair of socks out of that too. Yeah. Um, which I'm super excited about. Even, I think I might just make like shorties, like not do contrast and just make little shorties um, yeah. out of the 50 grams. So I'm super excited. So first Christmas gift knitting is done. Nice. So socks for my mother-in-law. Um, my second off my needles is a project that I started like last week. <laughs> I had to go out of town um, and I wanted something easy that I could knit like on the plane and in the airport and like in my hotel room at night. So I cast it on the Kuma cowl oh. by Laura Dobrat. And I finished That's it. That's a lot of knitting. That is. <laughs> it is like really loose gauge. So it is, again, the Kuma Cowl by Laura Dobrat. Um, it is knit in um, Emma's yarn. Um, and it is a, um, it was a kit that I bought for the Kuma Cowl. Um, it is- that Mohair in there or something? Yeah, so it's like a that. skein of regular um, fingering weight yarn and a strand of mohair held together. And then you can see, you know, there's five colors of the fingering weight. And then in between you just do the mohair. Uh -huh. um, so yeah. And then when you wear it, it, it's giving this very like puddled effect mm -hmm. when you wear it. And I kind of blocked it um, because it was rolling at the end. So I blocked it out a little bit and I, I don't know, I kind of liked the rolling better at this point, <laughs> um, but it's fine. Um, and the, I don't have all of the, um, all of the color names, but the kit that I got was called Beach Please um, because the mohair color was the Beach Please color. It's like they're kind of like sandy color. Um, and the first color here is Beach Please. So and were those all mini skeins? Yeah. Okay. So, um, and I pretty much used up pretty much the whole mini skein. Um, Maybe 20 grams? Mini skein? Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. But and then yeah. on a big gauge, cause you had the, yeah. With it, yeah, so. it's like a size 10 needle or something. So like, mm -hmm. I mean, it took me like in an evening, I could knit almost a whole section. Like, yeah. Like it was like nothing. That's so, really nice. I like that. Yeah. It came out really cute. And it took me like a week and a day to make, mm -hmm. you know, I knit in the airport on the plane. Um, a little bit in my hotel room at night, but like there really wasn't a lot of time um because I was working. Um, but yeah, then I I got I think I got up to the gold color when I was away and then I just had the rest of that and the other two and and it was done. So I have a finished object. <laughs> Very I cool. have that skein of mohair from Barnyard Knits that I got in the mystery that yeah. I have no idea what to do with. And I certainly five have five minis five minis and you can have a cowl and it's I mean it's a good size cowl too yeah. like this is yeah it's comfy. Big. yeah so very nice those are my finished objects this week I have something finished as well that is not as exciting as Julie's so I'll show mine and then Julie, <laughs> Julie could you know be our what's that called when you're the anchor the anchor right in the real life when you're like the best one yep. um I finished my mountain musing. That's pretty awesome. Oh, it yeah. is amazing. And I love it so much. Look how big it is. It really did come out big. Yeah. Um, I did the weave and Steven. So I pretty much just need to snip the ends, but I do have a few that need to be woven in. Yeah. So 
I love the colors. I Did am so, you, like, so happy. stretch yours when you blocked it? Because mine- I stretched it when I blocked mine, it. Mine, it did not come out very long. Um, and I'm still struggling with how to style yeah, it. Style it? It's so not as long. Mine is not, I wear my Just Beachy all the time. And it is incredibly, incredibly long. This, yeah, when like, I when I put it on doubled, it just, you know, it just comes to right here. Yeah, like I'm not sure wear it like that. that. But it looks like it's a lot wider than the Just Beachy, so it's very yeah. bunched up around your neck. Yeah, it's very wide, and that's the like I'm having trouble. That's how I would doing, wear it. Doing that with it because it's so wide. So I wear I bring my Just Beachy to work a lot, and I just kind of wrap myself in it while on at my desk because you never know if it's going to be freezing, if it's going to be really hot um so i'll probably bring this into work and just wrap myself up in it it is i i'm very, yeah, very that's, that's a lot of fabric around your neck yeah, yeah. as far as i can get but but you know i just cut my hair so <laughs> <laughs> i would be hair <laughs> i would so. wear mine like val more like a, a like wearable blanket kind of thing yeah or yeah. or like just kind of like wrap one side around right. like you know something like that but i'm having trouble i'm having you know, like, I love it. I think it's beautiful, but I'm having trouble figuring out how I'm going to style it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about this a couple of times already, so I don't really have anything to say about it. It's Miss Babs. It's uh, Mountain Musings. Do you hear my dog barking? A no. little bit. But it's okay. Fun. George just got home. So she I have my, uh, my washing machine going, so I can't hear anything else. So. Okay. All right. Well, Scott will stop in a second as soon as he walks through the door. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's my finished object. So Julie. All right. My finished object, all blocked and ends woven in and everything is my Stephen West twist and turns. Yay. So <laughs> I did mine in homespun house. So here is, so this is, I'll start here with clue one. So my colors were the blue is called Galileo. The gray is called idol. Um, e D E L. And then this orangey color is called turmeric. And this was a kit from Homespun House called Thunder, I believe. So here's clue one is that center section. Clue two were these wedges and the cables on the bottom of them um, on each side. Clue three was these orange things sticking out. And then on clue four, we filled in the triangle. So I probably should have said spoiler alert, but I think we're far enough past it that yeah, you know, it's whatever. It's, you haven't it, seen it's it yet. already done. Yeah. You don't watch podcasts, so what does it matter? Or um, so Instagram. it's really, <laughs> really long. Um, I love it. I'm very happy with it. I chose to do the uh, I don't know, early exit option where on the bottom of the center, I just did um, this twisted rib and then attached my loops to it to close them off. And then I bound off. You could have done more chevrons underneath that, but I didn't like the idea of the rest of it being rather like an even flat edge. And then just having this, it would have stuck down, like would have stuck down like a few inches, like down, I can't even show how far, like probably three or four inches down from there. And I just thought that looked weird. Like yeah, it looked a lot of like people a, are saying it looked like a bib. It looked like a bib. Yeah, if you put it on forwards, it would look like a bib. But I thought it kind of looked like a, um, like you left your shirt tails out of your shirt. Like you tucked everything else in, but you left the shirt tails out. Um, but it's, it's, I love it. It's long. It's beautiful. It's all I did for a month. Um, so what does it look like on? Um, I, I haven't decided how I'm going to wear it yet. So if I were to do it like I normally do a shawl, which is put the center in the front and put these to the side, you get a lot of that braided action, which I like. Those are mm -hmm. so pretty. They are. They were a pain in the butt, <laughs> but they're totally worth it. Um, He's right. Like once you get a few repeats in, you kind of start getting a rhythm to them where you just have to glance and see what kind of a row you're on. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to wear it like that or 
you know, it is super long. I could probably do this. And then you'll see more of like the stripe section. So, you know, I have That's a little messy to... though. Yeah, it does kind of look messy. I might wind up just wearing it like a, like a scarf because it's so thin and just kind of wrapping it around and around and around. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not something that like my normal big shawls, I just wear over my shoulders like that. This, I would never do that with because these wings, they're hanging down to my knees. Mm. So it wouldn't be comfortable or, you know, things would get stuck on stuff, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do that. Maybe well, I'll yeah, you could do that. I could do this or yeah. I could put like a, if I were to put it around and put like a shawl cuff here, I mm -hmm. think that would work well. Um, so, you know, I haven't, haven't quite worked out styling yet because I didn't want to play around with it too much until I showed it off. So, so I'm super happy with it. I, um, did not completely keep up, but I wasn't too far behind because I started, my yarn didn't get here until the day before clue two dropped. So I was already a week behind. I think I finished it November 1st. No, November 4th. So I wasn't that far behind. Um, well, someone hasn't even cast it on yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, do you want to see how far I am on mine? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I brought it upstairs with me today. <laughs> Very far. I think um, I think this is the same spot I was at last time. We I think so. <laughs> Well, you know, then I went away and then I realized that I have to do holiday knitting. So that's as far yeah. as I got, but I'm still going to work on it. I'm still going to, yeah. it's going to get done. I am going to make it, uh, but I'm super far behind. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So I think that's all our finished objects. Um, let's get on to what's on, what's on our needles. So Val, what do you have on your needles? Um, okay, so I have two things. I'll show you this one first. This is um, a muscle borrow hat for my nephew, Charlie. I talked about this last time. I had gotten the yarn at Liftbridge Yarn when I went to visit my son in Rochester. I forget the name of it and I didn't bring the label up with me, but it's a spun right round color. Um, I'm, I'm unhappy because I didn't pay attention to, so Julianne mentioned there was some drama going on recently. I was, you know, in the middle of that when I cast this on and I wasn't paying attention to the gauge or the instructions or anything. So I was just increasing, 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 increasing. And then I looked at the instructions and I measured my gauge and I realized I had 40 stitches per section and I really should have had like 32 or something, 30 or 32. So I had to like knit, unknit it but I was stressed and overwhelmed and it didn't occur to me to just put a lifeline in and like rip back. So I like yeah. literally unknit. Um, That's a lot of knitting. Yeah. And I didn't go far enough back. So I should have gone back one additional repeat. So I'm making, it turns out I meant to make an adult medium. I'm making an adult large for a 15 year old. Um, so this is the exact same size and gauge that I made my husband in an adult large and it fits him perfect. And I made his, um, so you don't fold it up. He's not like a fold over the brim kind of a person. It more fits him like a watch cap. Um, for my nephew, I was going to give him the option of like wearing it slouchy or folding it up. Um, so I'm hoping that that will like take up a little bit of the extra room because I'm not undoing it at this point. I really, I do like the colors. I like mm -hmm. how they're, it's pooling to kind of stripe. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty. I, I think the colors are good for him. Um, I'm, I'm just unhappy with myself that I didn't pay enough attention and I'm I don't think. I don't think it's going to be as big as you think it's going to be. Yeah. And like, is he going to get bigger? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah hopefully so then, he's only 15. He's yeah, so then like bigger. he can, he can continue to use the hat if he gets bigger. <laughs> yeah. That's what so, yeah. he's like, he'll grow into it. I was like, yeah, but a kid doesn't want a hat that he's going to grow into. Well, he can wear it a little slouchier now and yeah. it'll be a little bit more of a watch cap when he gets older. It's fine. Yeah. All right, so that's um, item number one. 
And then this one is super exciting. I am finally working on my shift cowl. Yay. Yay. Uh, so this is the shift cow cowl by um, Andrea Mowry, who is DR DRK Nets, right? Drea and Drea yeah. Renee yeah. Nets. Drea Renee Nets, yeah. Nets, yeah. Um, so this is it. It's all hand spun yarns. Um, you use three colors and, you know, anyone who's watched any other episode of this podcast knows I have been obsessing over this project for a very long time. Um, so this is my color A. This is Wound Up Fiber Arts in Nest Egg and it's a Polworth silk. So it's all, it's like a very light green with some blue in there, but like mostly green and it's very light. Um, this is, I believe this was Banshee Fiber Arts. This is a Polworth silk and it's like purple and cream, also a very light color. And then I have this color and this is Quillen Fiber Arts. It's Targi silk and bamboo and the colorway is Swamp Gas. I think this one was something like espresso or like cappuccino, something to do with coffee. I don't know. <laughs> But you know, like the color swamp gas. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize that's what it was called. Yeah, she had one called Toad. Um, like she had some fun colors. Um, yeah. I had actually, I think I talked about this on the podcast before. I had reached out to her and was like, "Hey, can you put some colors together for me?" And she came up with like a couple of arrangements of colors, and then I wound up only using this one. Um, but you cast on color A, and then you do this slip stitch pattern. So like color A is your background color all the way up until here. So you cast on color A and then with color B and C, you do like the slip stitches. And then up here, you change to color B being your background color. And I'm only using color C as my slip stitches. I think at some point I'm gonna bring color A back in, but I've been using color C as my slip stitcher from here all the way through here. So I think if I paid more attention to the pattern, like you can't tell where I change from color A to color B as my background color, because this happened to be, color A happened to be fading into a dark spot when I switched to color B and they're almost exactly the same color. So like, you can't even tell, like it happens like right here. Um, but it's not where there's the dark line, like it's a couple of- But I love that you can't tell. Yeah, I kind of like that you can't the, tell. Like, I think part of the pattern is that you're supposed to see like all these crazy color changes. And I feel like my background is green the entire way. I think that- You have I, so much color in there. Like yeah. you can't tell. It looks like you have seven different skeins. Yeah. But I think I think if I had plant if I had realized how the colors would change, I would have made the purple my other background color. So I think okay. I would have wanted to have half of it green with the background and then the other half purple with the background instead of the light green and the dark green with the background. Because yeah, you can't you don't think you're gonna have the purple as a background at all? I think there's a tiny section. I think there might be like an inch and a half where you have the purple as the background. But I think part of the the fun of this that it's like kind of hectic and kind of willy nilly with what goes on in the background. So I think I probably shouldn't have done two greens. Um, and it would have just made it a little, a little different, but I, I can't wait. I can't wait to wear this. It is so squishy because it's a slip stitch. This is the wrong side. I don't know if you could tell like how floofy it is. It's mm -hmm. just so squishy and cozy and I cannot wait to wear it. And I want to go through my hand spun scraps and make a million more of these because it really <laughs> does not take a lot of yarn. Like this is, this is almost an entire skein and I'm already, I'm already decreasing. You could so. probably make a, a shawl out of it instead of the. Yeah. Shawl. Well, I think you need five colors. So I need two more. <laughs> to I, I've it. seen people do it out of three colors, like, but using the full skein of the three colors. Yeah. I mean, you, you could really adapt it to however yeah. you want. You know, she said to use color A, use color, like use whatever you want. Yeah. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. So I'm excited that I'm finally making this. Yeah. Me too. Nice. I'm inspired to start spinning for mine eventually. You're done hearing about it? <laughs> no, I, well, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. I can't wait. Um, and then I think I'm going to just steam block it. I don't think I'm going to like aggressively pin it down yeah. and fully wet block it. I think I'll just steam it out and then seam it. Well, you want all the squishiness to stay. Yeah. You don't want to stretch yeah. that out. Yeah. 
absolutely. So yeah, they were all hands fun. They're all, you know, I'm very happy with it. Yay. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. So is that all that's on your needles right now? That's all I'm going to talk about today. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll go through what's on my needles. I have a Musselberg hat as well by Zolda Teague. Um, this one is going to be for our dad for Christmas. I showed this, I don't know if it was last time or the time before. I haven't made all that much progress because everything got put on hold and I worked on the Stephen West thing. So now I'm back to other projects. So this is going to be the hat for our dad. This is Green Mountain Spinnery Yarn. Um, let's see if I still have the tag. Green Mountain Spinnery. Ragtime is the type of yarn and the colorway is Parker. It's a DK weight yarn. So that's actually, I didn't realize the name of the colorway was Parker and mom and dad absolutely. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Gold Rush <laughs> and Gold Parker Rush. Schnabel is like their oh. favorite. So, oh yeah. So I was just going to say that. Oh, that's fitting. They love Parker. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch some of that when I was up there. So yeah, <laughs> of course. <you> did. <laughs> Mostly we watch Alaskan Bush People, but we watched a little bit of Gold Rush because oh I was there on Gold Alaskan Rush. Alaskan Bush night. People is also another oh, one of their favorites. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Um, so this, I want to try and finish. So I have two Christmas presents left to knit. This is one of them. The other one is going to be a pair of socks for Val's husband. Um, so I want to try my hardest to get it all done by November and leave my December free for Advent knitting. Um, and to have like no, no stressful knitting that I have to get done because I just want to enjoy November. I don't want to have to make presents and stuff. So this I am about, I think 14 or 15 inches into it. I have to do 23 inches before I start the decreases for the top. Wow. Um, so I'm going to try and do like an inch, inch and a half a day and that I should be able to finish it. No problem with that. Um, I have my little, little mouse stitch marker Aww. and he's got a little Slytherin scarf on. I don't remember where that was from. Probably homespun house with something or other, some kid I bought from there. Um, so that's my first project and it's moving along now that I picked it back up. And my second project that when I'm bored of working on that, because, okay, so I haven't really knit on anything with such small, like needle tips like, cause it's a 16 inch, you can't have a super long one. I haven't done that in a long time. So it's kind of exhausting my hands. So yeah, I only I do a bit at a time. So my other project that I'm switching it out with is my half a granny square shawl that I was where I definitely showed this before as well. Yeah. So this is out of Q Loco's, um, Hocus Pocus two colorways. I got the mini skein set. So this is what it looks like so far. I'm just doing one row in each color and then um, putting them all like aside as I use them. And then once I use them all, dump them back into the bag. And then I just pick out a color and do it. So it's not, it's not in any order, but I am going through each color before I move on to each color again. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing. It's not very big. And my mini skeins are starting to get a little small. Um, I think I'm still going to have plenty left, but when it gets to the point that I can't do a full row, then I'm going to stop with the mini skeins and I might switch. I did get a full skein of one of the colors, um, this blue and orange in here that is, um, it's called black flame candle. So I might wind up doing like a border of just that around the edge of it. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. That'll look we'll good. see. We'll see how much it grows. So that's my little break in between other in between the Musselberg. And that's about all I have on the needles other than, you know, my socks that live in my car that I work on when I'm outside of the house. So, so Gloria, what are you working on? Um, I have a couple things. So I am still working on my um, garter marler cardigan, but I haven't made much progress on that lately um, because I've kind of put a lot of things aside because I have holiday netting to do. I realized it's the middle of November and I need to make some Christmas presents. Um, so I finished the socks for my mother-in-law. So now I'm starting socks for my sister-in-law. Um, and the socks I am making are, what's the pattern here? The timeless arrow socks. 
um, also by Kay Litton, the crazy sock lady. So, um, you know, when I decided that I was gonna knit socks over the summer during um, summer sock camp, you know, I looked up a bunch of her patterns because she was hosting summer sock camp. So I was like, oh, let me look up the pattern. So now I have like 16 of her patterns that I wanna make. <laughs> um, so I finished the, so the, um, the shallow socks and I started those ones. So I just have the cuff right now. So I am going to do, um, for these ones, I'm just gonna do the contrast cuff and heel. I'm not gonna, or, or toe, I'm not gonna do the heel. Um, so it's just gonna be the cuff and the toe. So I have a mini skein for that. And this is Emma's yarn. Um, so I had mentioned over the summer, one episode I went through all of the, um, the Emma's yarn crazy beautiful um, club. Yeah. Um, that I had a nine month subscription to. So next month is my last month. Oh, no. um, and I'm very upset, um, but I'm finally using one. So this one was from May. This was my May um, color and the contrast is called cactus flowers. Um, and then the main color is this pink. It's a, it's a light pink with like brighter pink speckles and there's little yellow in there, a little bit of orange. So those two together. So, so why just the cuff and the toes? Are you afraid you're gonna run out or you just don't yeah. wanna weave in the ends? Uh, both. both. So I don't wanna weave in that many ends um, and I don't think I'm gonna have enough with the mini to do a full cuff. Um, Cause I could have just done like Crazy Sock Lady does her little pop of color. Um, but it, it, I was like, well, I don't know. It's a lot of ends to weave in for a pop of color. <laughs> yeah. So I think I'm just gonna do the full cuff and the toe. Um, but my question is, if I'm doing the cuff in a contrast color and then it goes right into pattern, should I do one row, like just knit before I start the pattern? Or can I just start the pattern? Cause I feel like that's the issue I had with this one is I went right into the pattern and I felt like it was like, it kind of jogged a little. So I don't know if I should do like one row, just plain knit before I start the pattern, but then the cuff, like it's not a straight one by one cuff. Like it's, Oh, cause it probably lines up with the pattern. Right, yeah. So I don't know if, if, if I it's do a round of straight knitting if that's going to mess up how the pattern is going to interact with the cuff. A round of straight knitting isn't going to mess up anything as long as you're starting as long as you're not doing more than like one round no one's yeah. ever going to notice like it's not going to mess up your ribbing or anything like that um but just like does the pattern call for a contrast heel I mean contrast cuff no okay look at other people's projects on Ravelry and yeah. see what they did like see if someone did a contrast cuff yeah, the only the only thing I would worry about is where you're part like if you're not purling in the same place but if it's part of the pattern it'll be fine because they probably are meant to line up otherwise you get that little right. like you know pearl so bump that shows but then if I if I do one row of straight knitting do I start with row one of the pattern or row two of the pattern row one, one. okay and it shouldn't mess up like, I mean, it's it's not gonna mess up where it lines up, but that one row of knitting isn't gonna I think the like, one mess row up how the pattern interacts with the cuff. Right. You know? No, okay. It'll be fine. All right. But I would check Ravelry because you may not even need to do that one row of knitting. Right. Maybe fine. Right. So I started those um, and those are going to be a Christmas gift. So I have to get working, moving on those. Um, and then I also have, I pulled out again, my cozy comfort throw Ooh. that I was making as a baby blanket. Although I think I mentioned this last time, it is not baby blanket size. <laughs> um, it is quite large at this point. I probably should like lay it out on the bed and see like really how big it is. Yeah. Um, Wow. Oh. <laughs> that is big. Yeah. And these are all scraps um, held with a um, a strand of just bare, like a bare knit picks, undyed. Um, but this is going to be a um, 
baby gift. Um, and my friend is due in February and she's planning on having a party in January. So I'm considering it like holiday knitting um, yeah. because I want to have it done obviously by January. Um, but I think, I think I'm on color like 20 or 21. So I'm almost done. Um, I'm going to do, my plan is to, was to do 24 stripes. Um, cause it was supposed to, it's like, it's meant to be an advent type of project. Um, and, uh, and then the 25th color was the border. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be put a border on it. I think I'm just going to leave it. Yeah. So. Nice. Um, so those are what I've been actively working on right now. Okay. All right. Well, we're I'm actively on... working on my hat because you guys are stressing me out thinking about yeah. holiday knitting. I might. Um, this is I might holiday knitting. <laughs> we're working on this on my lap right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So up next is our outlier crafts. So Val, you said you had in our dreams. Oh, in our I forgot about in our dreams. Okay, in our <laughs> dreams. <laughs> I don't even know if I prepped anything for that. So, all right. What's in your dreams? Uh, let's start with Val. Okay. So I, I have a couple of things. Um, I've been talking about the granny go round sweater. I think that's, you know, been discussed several times as well. Um, I finally ordered the yarn for it. So nice. I made pallets. I, it uses a DK weight yarn. So I made pallets in both um, a DK weight from webs in their um like house brand whatever that's called Hawthorne no I don't remember Valley Yarns Valley Yarns so I made a DK weight Valley Yarns palette and then I made a Knit Picks palette um and then Knit Picks I had like everything in my cart in both sites and I was like agonizing over what I was going to get one was um tweed and the other was not and that was pretty much the only difference between the two um and then Oh, I had the picture up and I just did something weird. Um, and then Knit Picks had a sale. So I was like, all right, this seals the deal. And I had, if you put everything in your cart and then don't buy it, you get emails saying like, here's a discount code. So Ooh. pro tip, Ooh, <laughs> yeah, pro tip for that as well. So you might want to put things in your cart and not purchase it because they will send you a discount code. So it went from like $90, which is already great for a sweater worth of yarn. Yeah. And then with the sale, it brought it down to 70 something. And then with the discount code, it was $60 for wow. 65, 65, 26 for a sweater's worth of yarn. And it was free shipping over $65. So I made it by 26 cents. Um, so that's like two pairs of socks. That's Seriously. Crazy. Yeah. Um, let me adjust my brightness and see if that helps. Um, so those are my yarn colors. I love it. So I'm doing the granny stripe sweater. I'm going to do the cardigan version and I'm doing it with every other row will be this green color. So every other row will be that green color. And then I'm rotating those other five. Um, and then the green will also be my border. So I bought, I think I needed like 800 grams of fiber altogether. And I purchased 400 or maybe a little more than 400 grams of fiber in the green. And then 50 grams in all of the other colors because with the regular striping, you needed 50 grams of all the regular colors and then like 200 grams of the other. So I don't know, I'm completely winging it. I have no idea if I'm gonna have the right amounts of yarn. <laughs> well, Big surprise. <laughs> let's hope they don't discontinue any of your colors. So, <laughs> well, and you should be I fine. And if you need to order then. more, you order more. So yeah. Yeah. Just, just work on it quickly after you get the yarn. Yeah, the so, so then I was looking to purchase the pattern because I haven't purchased the pattern yet. I really like watch them like go out of business and be like, we're not selling patterns anymore. <laughs> um, so I should probably do that as soon as we're done recording. Um, yeah. But I was looking at the pattern. I can't remember who makes it, um, but I should probably look that up on Ravelry. Um, but they have the granny go round sweater and the granny go round cardigan. But then they also have um, like a longer version of it. And then they have like a looser fit version of the sweater. So they have like a longer cardigan and then like a looser sweater. So now I'm questioning what I should actually make. You know, should I make the longer cardigan? Should I make the shorter cardigan? Do I have enough yarn for the, you know, the longer cardigan? Yeah, well, I think that's going to be the deciding factor. Iron I lamb. Have enough it's, yarn. Yeah. Iron lamb is who makes the pattern. 
Yeah, just so I was start looking... doing the cardigan. And if you look like you got plenty of yarn left and you want it bigger, just make the longer cardigan. So the, the longer cardigan basically. is called Granny Rocks and it has pockets. Ooh. Wow. I do that. <laughs> yeah. So I wish that I had seen that first, but I really like the Granny Go Round. Um, let me pull that up for you. So this on the pattern site, they're just showing it like every other row as a different color, but I'm doing every other row the same color. So it's gonna give it like a little bit of a different look. And I hope that it looks like tidy enough that I could put it over a t-shirt for like a Friday to wear to work. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's my first in my dreams. I'm very excited to get my yarn. I did get the shipping notification and it, um, it looks like they just made the label, but they haven't actually sent the yarn yet. Um, the second thing I'm just going to mention really, really quick is I had ordered an, an Ingle Nook holiday set of bats, and I got the email yesterday saying, time to pay. Um, okay. So this worked. This was very weird the way it was set up. You pre-order it, and then you get like guaranteed a slot but then you don't pay for it until they're ready to ship it. So yeah. they had two different versions, a sparkle version and a non-sparkle version. And I opted to be surprised. So I don't know what I'm going to get. Is nice. it sparkly or not? And I think- and, and you don't know what yarn, what the fiber looks like, right? That's a surprise? The, what the fiber looks like is a surprise. I think it might be a set of faded bats. I really have no idea. I, I don't remember. I don't know what I'm getting. I, I, I feel like there was an night. inspiration photo maybe. I think it was Starry Night, um, yeah. but I don't remember. Um, so I'm excited for that. I have no clue what I'm gonna make, but then I have like, I went a little bit of a different direction for this other. This is my final in my dreams. Um, we've been talking a lot between the three of us about like being overwhelmed by how much we have and like trying to do stuff from our stash. And Julie mentions um, some other podcaster was like randomly grabbing project bags. And like, yes. <laughs> so. so that was, that was happy little yarn. And that was her vlogtober. And she went and she just randomly grabbed project bags off of like the top of her shelves and would like surprise herself with what's in it every day. It was so much fun. So this is a oh. spice market by Melanie Berg. Oh my God. <laughs> that was, you got that from Rhinebeck. I remember I was with you guys. Like you two stopped. times ago. It was years since the last time we went and it was the time yeah. before that. It that was probably like five, probably like six or seven years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. This might have been the first project I purchased that uses mini skeins. I yeah. think, I think I was working mm -hmm. on that because we got the kits at the same time. I think I was working on that on my honeymoon. Yeah. Look and I've been married for eight years. <laughs> who even am I? Look how organized I am. I made a little well, index card. You're lucky you have that. <laughs> I am very lucky I have this. <laughs> Otherwise, I, had, I would have no clue what I'm doing. So it looks like there are six contrast colors. Um, I, th I think I might start working on this one day again. Yay. Um, so I've been thinking about like, so it's a general in my dreams, um, that I've been thinking about like pulling out some of my old projects and just finishing them instead of just, you know, buying more things. And, you know, and there's a, a beautiful yellow shawl somewhere that you need <laughs> yeah. to finish for me. Yeah. Yeah. How many years ago did you graduate from, uh, uh I don't know. My daughter's 14 and it was before that. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> that that was making me a a graduation shawl for when I finish my doctorate, and um, I still have yet to see. Well, I saw it with the needles in it. I think yeah. we posted a picture of it on the Nitsis Instagram yeah. as like my longest lingering whip <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly where it is. It's it's in a you know a Ziploc bag under my bed. Yeah. Like one of well, those, that's, like, that, the that's a good in your dreams to start working through some whips and stuff. I mean, we were so excited about these things when we first got the kits and yeah, first yeah. decided to make them. So it's, it's nice to get them done. Yeah. yeah. And I'll say the, um, <clears throat> the yarn for that, for the, on the spice market is dirty water dye works. So I am, I have to say very impressed with myself for having, <laughs> I have my little decoder thing. I have my needles have are still pattern. in it. I have the pattern, I have the label for the yarn, I have everything in here like ready to go. And nice. I think I probably would be able to just kind of pick up for where I left off. Mm -hmm. So 
in my dreams, I will finish some of my lingering projects. Nice. Um, I'll go real quick. My in my dreams, because I did not prepare for this at all. Um, I'm going to say I want to make a shift. I don't know if I'm going to make a cowl or a shawl, but I also have yarn picked out that I want to spin. So I think once I'm done with my holiday knitting, which hopefully will be the end of November, um, I want to start spinning for the shift, either cowl or shawl. So that's my first thing. My second thing is I have been, I am very overwhelmed with my stash right now. Um, I want to be at the place where when I see something I want to make and I'm ready to make it, I don't feel bad just going out and buying the yarn. Um, like right now, I feel like I have to dig through my stash and see if there's anything that matches and that I could use. And I try and fit things in that don't always work as well as I'd like. Like, for instance, last year's last Stephen year's West <laughs> MCAL, um, I forced colors in there that it just didn't look good and I gave up on it. And if I had bought a kit, I probably would have st stuck with it. Um, but I, did, I felt bad buying a kit because they were hundreds of dollars and I have so much yard in my stash. So I do want to get to the point where my stash is much more manageable um, and much smaller. I've been very inspired by Nitty Natty's um, journey. I had I had watched her for a while and then I stopped watching her, but then Gloria had mentioned her and I started again. So it's probably been about a month or so that I've been watching her again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I missed like the first 10 months of her journey for de-stashing because that was her goal for 2022 was to de-stash and have no stash at all. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, not that she had a big stash to begin with. I believe she's in a, like a smaller apartment in New York city. So she doesn't have that much room to store stuff, but, and she didn't seem to have a big stash to begin with, but still, you know, she's getting to the point where she has zero stash. And I think that's awesome. I don't want to be zero stash. I want to still be able to just go and pull a skein of sock yarn and start a pair of socks. Like I don't want to be zero stash, but I want to be smaller stash. So I'm, um, I'm going to work on a plan for myself on how to work down my stash. So I don't have any outlier crafts, so I'm going to talk about this now. Um, but what I've been doing, and I think you do this too, Julie, is you have a spreadsheet kind of, of like yarn in and yarn I out. I used to, I don't really, I haven't really been keeping track of it lately. Yeah. So I've been keeping up with mine. Um, and I started doing last month. So in October, like I started now, like I have the full spreadsheet of like all my yarn in and out. And then now I'm doing like breaking it down by month. So like I'll have the full spreadsheet and then I have a by month, like October yarn in and out. Um, and I was doing good in October. I had more yarn out than in. And then some of my like monthly subscription things came early. Um, so it kind of pushed me over. Um, but my goal is going to be for the month to have more yarn out than in. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, eventually that will bring my total yarn down a little bit. Um, yeah. So yeah, cause I'm trying, I have purchased my advent <laughs> for the year and we're gonna, we, we, you know, we talked about, we're gonna have another, a different episode for advent um, planning and all that. Um, so I'll talk about more then, um, but I'm gonna try not to purchase any more yarn until the new year at least. Um, I'm assuming, you know, I'm probably going to get like gift cards and things um, for the holidays. Um, so of course I have to, you know, <laughs> you if I get, if I, yeah, right. <laughs> if I get a, if I get a gift card to four pearls, you have to buy yarn with it. Like yeah. what else are you going to do? Um, but yeah, that's my plan is to try to have more yarn out than in um, for the come up um, and that will bring stuff down a little bit. And I'm like, holiday knitting has really inspired me to like finish things um like actually finish projects and like the past two months of actually finishing things um has uh, you know like I want to finish things that are in project bags um and and kind of get those things done and start with like a clean slate of yeah I want to be excited about when a new project comes out to yeah. cast it on like the lace and fade boxy that I've been dying to make you know like I bought the kit what in like August and it's like, I haven't had time to cast it on yet because I have all these other things on yeah. the needles already. So um, I really want to, I really want to get moving on that. I think um, I'm going gonna, gonna to join you in the trying not to buy any yarn until the end of the year, because I already yeah. have like my knitting planned out through the end of the year, because December is going to be mainly advent knitting right now is mainly 
finishing up my Christmas knitting. So there's no reason to buy any more yarn with yeah. one exception. And that is depending on what the Murray Woolco <laughs> inspiration photo is for December. I did Whatever it by the November photo is you're going to have major FOMO if you don't order it. I didn't order November and I don't feel bad about it yet. You didn't order November. I didn't because I ordered. So I ordered October and it was beautiful. And I added it to my pile of ones that I haven't knit from her. And I was like, I just want, like, I just want to knit stuff and not have this pile of stuff anymore. So I did not order November. Um, I, as everyone probably knows by now, I like themes to my things and November didn't really have theme. October didn't either, but I still, I'm happy I ordered that one. Um, but you know, like she does often do based on movies or books or whatever. So we'll see what December is. I'm not as drawn to the, just a pretty picture ones. Um, as beautiful as the yarns usually wind up being, I like it better when it's a theme. So we'll see. So Gloria, right. what's in your dreams? So my official in my dreams. Um, so I'm making this baby blanket um, for a very good friend of mine who's having a baby. Um, and then I got the bright idea to make a sweater for the baby too. Um, so I really want to make the um, Elizabeth Zimmerman baby surprise jacket. Um, I do not understand the pattern at all. <laughs> um, so I'm, I have no idea how much yarn I need. Is it DK weight? What size needles am I using? Like I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm completely lost. Um, so I looked back in Ravelry and I did make it twice. I made it once for my nephew that I'm making this hat for, and I made it once for my niece, Julie's daughter. So the one that I made for Kaylee was out of hand spun. So who knows? Yeah. So <laughs> your story means nothing because you nobody could, knows you could anything. Pick up anything. No, my story means you could pick up any yarn of I'm any like, gauge and just. I don't know. How big is it going to be? How big is this going to end up? It it's on 160 stitches. What weight am I using? What needle size am I using? How much fit. yarn do I need? Like, I can't plan a project if I don't know how much yarn I'm going to need. Like, it, it, it's. I, the whole thing makes no sense to me. Well, um, so with the baby surprise, you could probably like use multiple like colorways of the same weight. So right. I wouldn't right, worry so about having. I'm I'm looking up one that I made on Ravelry. I don't know if I can show a picture of it. Yeah, but I made a stripy one, mm -hmm. um, and that was a worsted weight. Lotus yarns, and I used one skein. Wait, one skein of each. I used two skeins. I don't know if I used the full skein of each one though, because I didn't write that down. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but it was to make to fit a one year old. Okay, so I think maybe I, it's been so long since I've done it and I haven't read through it, but I feel like maybe depending on what size yarn you use is going to depend on what size you make it it turns out maybe like the penguino maybe i'm not sure all right so this is what i've come up with so i have this skein of yarn um that i actually won um i won a prize from the mountain musings mcal nice. um i was she actually emailed me and she was like oh you want a prize do you want to claim because <laughs> 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 she put the um she put the winners on ravelry on an instagram and i don't really use the ravelry like discussion boards um yep. i find them very difficult to navigate um but she put it on the ravelry um and i didn't even know um so then so she emailed me and she was like uh the deadline was yesterday um so i emailed <laughs> her back and i got a, nice of her yeah was. yeah it was really nice yeah um so i got a skein of um studio socks fingering weight yarn from the fiber studio, mm. uh, which I believe is in North Carolina. Um, and the colorway is called dreamers. Um, so it's this um, kind of blue purple, it's got some greens in there, like some browns. Um, and I was pretty. thinking, so I was thinking that this sweater was going to be a DK weight. And I don't have a lot of DK weight yarn. So I said, of course, I can marl something <laughs> and hold two together. So then I had this skein that Julie actually sent to me. It's from Lola Bean, which I have never used Lola Bean before, and I'm really excited about it. And I thought the two looked good together. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is I can either marl the whole thing, or I can do like this one, like split the skein and then hold it double 
And then I can do a little marled section in the middle, and then I can do this one held double. So that would look really good, but it's such a weird construction. Like I would, I would sit down with it for a while before you can figure out what's going to be the middle and what's not, because it's really weird construction. It like is. You're, you might wind up with like one arm blue and one arm gray. Uh, okay. I don't remember it's, how it goes together. It well, was, it goes, I just remember I think you, you. I don't know. The thing I feel like no you start from the today, middle. So. I feel like you start from the middle of the sweater and then knit out. And you I, think do, you, like, I think you start at the top. Like you start at the top and then you increase and then you decrease. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I know. Don't, I, I don't I, all I remember is that like you have this like amorphous blob of knitting. Mm -hmm. And you, I, the first time I made it, I couldn't visualize it in my head. And then you have this random place, you fold it in half. And then you like, you seam under the arms and under, and down the side and you have a sweater. Mm -hmm. And it it's, made no sense the first time I knit it. It's magic. And I'm now that you. like, you know, my kids. Yeah, but I, I but like from knit. what I've seen of the pattern, it makes absolutely no sense to me. Right. So then I'm thinking maybe I should just marl them together for the whole thing. But then. I don't know how much yarn I need. So what do I do if I run out? Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know how to do this. So I'm looking up mine, my project. This is going to be tremendously helpful to you. Um, so I made a baby surprise for my nephew, Charlie. This was in 2007. Yarn. We'll get back to you on that. <laughs> I put my Ravelry notes. And then the colorway, I just called it blue self-striping. Um, so that's not helpful. Let's see if I can find the other one. Um, and then like the, is the gauge in stockinette stitch or garter stitch? Like it's all in garter stitch, right? Like, right. The whole so thing I'm assuming the gauge is going to be in garter stitch. Who knows? I don't even know. Right? If like I, 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 I'm, I'm completely lost. So if anybody who's commenting knows anything about the baby surprise jacket and can give some guidance here, or at least tell me where I can buy a better pattern, because <laughs> I really want to make it, but I don't understand how I'm supposed to make it. I so. feel like Val, at one point you like wrote out a new pattern for it for yourself, or maybe that was a February baby. Where did I get the February baby pattern from? I can't. It's in one of her books. It, it's in, um, not, so I think the opinionated knitter has the baby surprise and then her other one, her other book has February baby, but I can't, I don't think I have the other book. Oh, I don't know then. I have the one with the pink cover, but I've made, I made both the baby surprise, the February baby and the February lady, which mm -hmm. is like the grown up size. Um, so I definitely had the pattern. Yeah. I made myself a couple of sweaters. Like I'm realizing that as like, I made the tap and see, I made the February lady. Yeah. Um, so I have done a little bit of garment knitting. Myself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I want to make about this, this dream might become a nightmare because I have no idea how I'm supposed to do this. Yeah. So, and then it's like, if I mar all these together and run out, can I just use another color or it, what about what about switching to another pattern that you would have more guidance from? Like there's gotta be some adorable tin can knits, baby sweaters. Okay. Guess, yeah. But... So I do have some pictures on the baby surprise that I made for, for Kaylee that kind of show like how you knit it. So it looks like you do knit it from the top. And then I don't, I don't know if you could see where my needles are. Like my needles are going all the way around. Like they're going from the top okay. uh -huh. around and up. So I position that so it like you see where the arms are, but the uh -huh. arms are knit flat and then you seam. So then like if I run out of yarn and I end up using another color, it'll be like the front border and around the it. back. It'll yeah. be the front so that, and around the back. That would look fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you could definitely. It looks like I did a little pico edging on the bottom. And if she's due in like February, you can make a really tiny size one. Like yeah, but, three you know, to I six wanted, months. I want it bigger than baby. Like, you know, I want it something that like she can have for a while that the baby can kind of grow into. So All right, then you'll have to do, because then the next time it's cold, they'll be like nine months old. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to do like a nine to 12 month at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But how do you know what size you're making? 
I have to take a look at the pattern yeah, again. Yeah. I know I, I took the book out, but um, I have to take a look at the pattern again. Yeah. I don't understand it. So if anybody can provide some guidance on how to make a <laughs> baby surprise jacket, it would be much appreciated. Yeah. So that's it. That's all, all I right. have. So I think on to our outlier crafts. So I have one finished object in my outlier crafts. I was making a um, embroidery project for a friend of mine as like a housewarming slash birthday gift. So this is the one that I was working on. It's from Cozy Blue. Um, and she sells these nice little embroidery kits, has everything you need for it, except like a pair of scissors. Um, so I actually finished it. So this is my finished one. Oh, and uh, the only change I made was they filled in their moon phases with um, satin stitch. And I absolutely hate satin stitch. So I just outlined it in uh, the wrapped back stitch thing, whatever, the whipped, whipped, whipped back, back stitch. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just used some extra floss to make a little hanger. And I even finished the back with felt. Ooh, very nice. So, so that's all done. And I don't think I was thinking about, oh, what should I work on next? And then I was like, nope, I'm going to not start another embroidery project for a little bit because um, I just have, I don't have much room where I store my whips and I just was getting, there was just too much there. Everything was falling off. But then I also got her from Cozy Blue, a little sticker. So you put this on your window and it makes really cool rainbows when the sun sh hits on it. So so that's it for my outlier crafts. Val, you have anything? I do. I also have embroidery, but I'm not as, um, I, I don't have like a finished project. Um, I'm this far into it. <laughs> so this is, it's just um, transferred onto the, um, the stuff, fabric, fabric. <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, I use the friction. Do you use the friction erasable pens? I um, don't have any. Um, but I've heard that they're amazing. I honestly right. do very little where I'm transferring it on. I usually get the pre-printed -print fabrics. Oh, I buy a lot of PDFs because I will make the same thing. Like I, I made a sailboat for like three or four people in our yacht club. Um, this is Magnus and Quill, I believe is the name of the company. And this is going to be very fluffy when it's made. Like all these little blue lines on the owl are going to be like satin stitch or favorite, but like fluffy satin stitch and then the snow bag also is going to be like the fibers are going to go all different directions um I'm not sure who I'm making this for yet I do make embroideries every year for my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law for Christmas and I'll make them like sometimes I'll make them for like our secretaries at work or something like that so I do my, make a bunch of embroidery projects last year I made gnomes for our mom and sister-in-law um so this will go to someone I don't know who yet but um, I found something really special when I was going through my, my um, materials to make this. I was going through to see if I had like the right colors and everything. And I found not one, but two like completed <laughs> projects that I, this was not last year. So this had to have been the year before. Uh -huh. um, they just need to go in hoops. They need to be ironed and put in hoops. So like this is a, this was the PDF that I purchased. I think I made like at least six of these. I made a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Um, and then I did like the flowers, all different colors. Um, and I absolutely loved making this. This was and other adventures. Um, I believe it was in another adventures. I'll, I'll check and I'll text you if you wanted to link it or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so I have two embroideries done. I have two Christmas embroideries done. I don't know who they're going to. I don't know if I gave them already to my mother and my, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, but if I didn't, I could just pop this in a frame and they're done now. Oh, um, so I give them like little ornament size things and I started this, which is not finished yet. It's a cabin. What does it say? Merry and bright. Merry and bright. I couldn't tell you who this is from. And I transferred, this says joy and it's supposed to look like, um, Christmas lights. So all these little spikes are different colored that lights. That was a free pattern from... Cozy blue. I cozy think this blue. was a cozy blue. Yeah. And I think this was a cozy blue too. This is a snow globe. I don't know if you could see it. No, I can't see that one. Um, so I have two that I've already transferred. And then, you know, so I'm excited. Like I've like a head start on some of my embroidery projects. 
do you uh, sorry my dog is whining in the background um do you got do you ever finish it in anything other than an embroidery hoop I haven't no I always I keep like so like there's this whole thing like floss tube now it's like embroidery and and cross stitchers on YouTube oh my god she's so loud I hope people hear that <laughs> um and one of them that I've been watching Teresa Kog Kogit um she has all these like great ways of finishing stuff like she'll do it like as a pillow or something like that but then she'll also like put, like glue it into a tray and have it on like a serving tray or she'll do like a antique book and like put it on the side of a book on like the front or back of a book and then she just has to stand the book up on a shelf and it's like a display all um, right can you send me that because I'm curious to see I'll, I'll in the show notes which will be underneath in the little carrot below um I'll link to her podcast so you can check her out um you. but she has some like really unique ways of finishing stuff and I'm 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 inspired to try it my problem is you know you most of these things you have to get it on a like piece of foam board or something like that which was always kind of scary to me because it's got to be really square when you do that um, so I need to find some videos on like how to do that. It looks like a lot of people now use like a sticky foam board. So you like stick it to it and then it makes it a lot easier, but that doesn't seem like it would last very well. Like it doesn't seem as, and you do everything like acid free and all that kind of stuff. Like I can't imagine putting it on something sticky. Right. And that's why I don't glue. Like when I put it in a, when I finish it in an embroidery hoop, I don't, some people glue it to the inside no. of the embroidery hoop. I don't do that. I pull in, I gather use the thread to pull in the the excess fiber and then I the fabric and then I whip stitch the felt right. onto the back yeah or blanket stitch I think I actually blanket stitch yeah I yeah blanket stitch buttonhole stitch whatever it's called um yeah that's the same thing I do so I don't know I need to start like they all do show their finished objects on floss tube but they don't show how they finish them and that's what I need to figure out Uh, looks like you've got some. Right. I think someone else is going to have to wrap this up. Okay. All right. So I think I, we're done for this week then, right? So comment below on our YouTube um, for the giveaway. Our, I don't know if we're setting a deadline, two weeks. Yeah, let's say two weeks. Okay. So today's the 13th, so whatever two weeks from then is. Uh, the, I don't know, 27th, 28th. I'll put it in the, I'll put it below because um, I don't yeah. know if this will get up until like a day or two because I have to edit. So. All right. All right. So I think All that's right. it. All right. Happy knitting. All right. Happy knitting. Bye-bye.